The boundary blend feature allows you to create a surface from a network of curves in one or two directions. Here I have a part model open and it's got a bunch of datum curves in here and a couple of flat surfaces. And I want to create a surface for the main part of this cover. So to create the boundary blend, we'll click on the command. And here in the interface, we can select curves in one direction or two directions. I'm going to open up the curves collector, which shows the same thing. And for the first curve, I'm going to use the boundary of this surface. So I will select an edge and I want to add to this chain. So to add to the first curve in the first direction, I'm going to hold down the shift key. And as I move my mouse over the edges, I could get the surface loop or I could go one by one, but I want the tangent chain. And with that highlighted, I'm going to click the left mouse button. So this is my first curve in the first direction. Be aware that you have drag handles on the ends of the curves in case you don't want to use the entire length and you could drag it some distance or if there are some point or vertex, you could hold down the shift key again to snap this drag handle to the point or vertex. But I don't want that. Let's change this back to zero. I want to use the entire length of the curve. Now to select my second curve in the first direction, I'm going to hold down the control key and again select a curve. And here you can see a preview of the surface that would be generated. And I want to add more curves to this second curve in the first direction. So now I'm going to hold down the shift key. So again, to make the distinction, Shift allows you to add additional entities to a curve. The control key allows you to add additional curves in a given direction. So again, I'm holding down the shift key and I'm going to select these other curves in here. Hold down the shift key again and select the other two on the other side. And that looks good for my second curve in the first direction. So now I want to create a third curve in the first direction. So I'm going to hold down the control key and this time I'll select a curve out over here. You can see that. Yeah, it looks pretty warped. Let's hold down the shift key and add other entities to this particular chain. And as I do that, it's starting to look better. There we go. So there I got those entities in my third curve in the first direction to select the fourth curve in the first direction. Again, I'm going to hold down control and let's use the shift key to add the additional segments into this particular chain. That's good. And now for my final curve in the first direction, I'm going to use the edges of the surface. So again, I'm going to hold down control, select the edge. And just like I did with the first curve, I'm going to hold down the shift key and move my mouse over the model until I get the tangent chain. So there I have my curves in the first direction. Now I'm going to select the curves in the second direction. And to do that, I could click in this collector on the dashboard or this collector in the curves tab, or you can hold down the right mouse button. You can see from the right mouse button menu or what's sometimes referred to as the asynchronous menu, you could click on the second direction curves collector. And this time I'll select this curve over here. The preview goes away because it does know how to create a surface with only one curve in the second direction. So let's hold down the control key and select the second curve in the first direction. And there you see a preview of the feature. And for the final curve in this direction, I'm holding down control and I will select this curve. Now in the uh, options, to, excuse me, the curves tab, you do have the ability to reorder curves. Sometimes that's necessary if you add in additional curves. Uh, if you click on the details button, that allows you to bring up this dialog box that'll help you construct the different curve chains for a given direction. But let's cancel out of here 
and we've got the preview. And right now, even in the preview, you can see I'm going to end up with a lot of different patches as part of this surface. For now, I'm going to hit the check mark to complete the feature. Middle mouse button is the same thing as the check mark. And you can see all the patches on the surface. And in general, the more patches that you have, the less aesthetically pleasing a surface can be. Let's go to the Analysis tab. And from the Curvature command, we could take a look at the Shaded Curvature. And I'm going to Query Select until I get the entire quilt. And this is showing what's known as the Gaussian Curvature. Very quick explanation of Gaussian curvature. Curvature itself is one over the radius at every single point on a curve or a surface. With the Gaussian curvature, imagine that you're standing on a point on a surface and you measure the curvature in every single direction around that point, like 360 degrees around that point. Then you multiply the maximum value times the minimum value, and that's the Gaussian curvature at every single point along a surface. In general, positive values indicate a hill, negative values indicate a saddle, like a, a depression, and a value of zero indicates a flat surface. But it's usually used to judge where you have discontinued discontinuities along a surface and again where you have sharp changes in the curvature and here we can see that we do have a lot of different sharp curvatures in here especially at the different patch boundaries so one thing that will help is to reduce the number of patches on this surface and with this Gaussian curvature you could change this from instead of being quick to being a saved analysis and when we click OK, this is what's called persistent display. In other words, while I've got the model open, I can see this Gaussian curvature and it'll update in real time as I make changes to my geometry. But I'm going to turn it off while I edit definition. So to do that, I clicked on the Saved Analysis button on the Analysis tab. And here it'll list any different saved analyses I have in my model. And to turn off the display, you click on the eyeball and it's no longer going to be visible. So let's close the Saved Analysis dialog box. To make this surface a bit smoother, to reduce the number of patches, I'm going to Edit Definition. And on the dashboard for the feature, you have something called control points that you can define. And control, control points help you to def define where the different patches are going to be. And you can define control points in the first and or the second direction. I'm going to do them in the first direction. And let's click here to select our control points. And so now what it's doing is it's highlighting the natural vertices that belong to the curves in the first direction. And in addition to vertices, you could use the different points. And for my first control point, I'm going to select this point over here. You don't have to worry about the boundary points because those are automatically going to be linked up. But I'm going to select this as the first control point for the first curve in the first direction. And now it's highlighting the vertices on the second curve in the first direction. And let's line up with that one. And already you can see that it's tweaking the shape of the surface and reducing the number of patches. And the corresponding point on the third curve will be this one. And then this one. And let me move the model open and zoom in. And that should line up with this point over here. And now if we want to define another set, let's go on to this point. And I'm going to do this one a little bit faster. I'm just going to click the corresponding points on the other different curves. And again, it's reducing the number of patches. You can already see how the left side is a lot smoother than the other side. And so let's then do another set of control points. And that one over there. And the last set in the first direction. This point, this point, getting pretty redundant at this point, no pun intended and our last control points. 
So that's good and it is a lot smoother. For now, let's hit the check mark again and I can go back to my saved analyses dialog box and turn on the display. And you can see that the colors changed a bit and it reduced the number of jagged discontinuities on those different patches on the surface. Let's turn off that display. Another thing to take a look at, let's edit definition one more time. On the boundaries, you have these circles with a symbol inside of it. And if you right click, you can choose your boundary conditions for that curve. Now, since I selected a bunch of edges belonging to another surface, you could choose to make it tangent to that surface, normal or curvature continuous. I'm going to choose tangent. And again, it'll help make a nicer transition from the flat surfaces to the other surfaces. And like before, you can right click on the circle on the boundary and change the condition. You can also do that if you go to the constraints tab. You'll notice that it lists here we have tangent tangent for the first and last change in the, fir in the first direction and they are free in the second direction. And there's some other different things in here like for the first uh, chain in the second direction. You can add what's called side, cur side curve influence and I'm going to zoom in a little bit just to show you that you can see that when I check this, it does alter the surface a little bit, makes it a little straighter in between here. So let's hit the check mark. And if I take a look, you know, it's, it's not a bad surface. It could be better. And the way that you would improve it in the future is by creating additional curves to control the shape. So for example, if I don't like how this boundary goes in here, I would create some other curves and then edit definition of the boundary blend to add them in here. And similarly, we have this really small patch in here, just like I did in the first direction. We could create points on the underlying curves and then use them as control points. And just be aware that if you create those different points, in order to use them, they have to appear before the boundary blend in the model tree. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.